And here we are at Bogies for our Tuesday night podcast. I am John Massoni here with Venice Indian head football coach John Peacock. And coach uh, just had a nice little highlight package, hype, hype video for, of, of uh, the Indians, and of course, a highlight package of our golf tournament on Saturday, which was another huge success for Venice, Venice High School football. Yeah, it had a full full course. You know, you know all 27 holes were filled. Absolutely. Uh, they were actually had a, a people stand by. <laughs> wanting to get in and couldn't get in so yeah we were getting uh, calls from people just saying hey can you stick me in a team and any cancellations so it's you know you, you everybody who's been there you've talked about it glowingly about how it is the biggest and the baddest and the best uh golf tournament in, in the west coast of florida and it did it, it, it hold true held true again this this year it's getting you know to the point where it's 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 so smooth you know some of these times these tournaments especially these big ones i played in a lot of them over the years they can be sort of clustery and you kind of feel like you're you know slow and it kind of gets a little bit you know it gets a little methodical this is a very crisp pace lots of people out there interaction with different volunteers and the volunteers are are just fantastic so yeah it's it's a, it's a it's a well-oiled machine at this point and it, it's definitely something that uh i can see be, being done for years and years and years had a new future. sponsor come aboard this year with lux realty right lux that, realty yeah, and, they're, and they're going to be their a, own little tent and yeah they're going to be we're going to spotlight them at the at the half but yeah lux realty did it has been a really good sponsor for this year very i i commented to anthony who's an alumni uh of venice high school i commented that 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 his um his commercials that he does on the on the screen are probably the most one of the most entertaining ones i've seen oh, they are. in a yeah. long time just Kind of, he kind of gets gets it. He understands who he's who he's sort of speaking to, and yeah. as far as the crowd, and I think everybody sort of catches everybody's eye. So, yeah, great they're, job they're pretty, by him. Definitely pretty good. Uh, yeah, commercials for sure. No doubt, no doubt. But with that, again, big success for the golf tournament. Again, congratulations to everybody involved with that. It was a great time. But the big bigger story was Friday night, where the Venice Indians came out uh, in an opening round playoff game against the Fort Myers Riverdale Raiders and uh, put a historic. Uh, point total on the board with an 87 to 20 victory. Uh, you know, I felt like our kids were focused. They, they came in the game, um, you know, with a with a with a direct focus of we're going to handle handle the business tonight and not look ahead to the next opponent. And they came out uh, firing on all cylinders. You know, three plays into the game, we were we were up seven nothing. And um, special teams had one of the biggest nights, or probably the biggest night ever in yeah. our school's history. Yeah. You know, with Elliot Washington had three kickoff returns for touchdowns as well as uh you know, he had Keon with about a 65 yard return as he well did. yeah um and so that that you know that was one of the big sparks and one of the big things we walked away is you know we used to return three touchdowns on the kickoff return two for 99 and one for 90 that's a huge huge night um as far as your special teams go uh offensively we we scored every possession we um we never fell short in the red zone we you know Brooks Bentley had a great night he uh you know not only that was his, was his stat line and the numbers, you know, excellent, uh, but just you know that really doesn't tell the whole story. I mean, you got to turn the film on and see. I mean, he's putting these balls. I mean, perfect. I mean, perfectly thrown downfield. The, the right speed. Right. The right. Everything's right where it needs to be. Nothing low. Nothing behind anybody. Giving these guys an opportunity to make plays after the catch. Sometimes the ball's a little behind you. You got to stop and. Yeah. You, and you, I want to say right we had, I want to say we had two or three drops. Um, Lee, yeah. I know two. I, th I can think two off right, right off my top of my head right, right. now. But right. I think we probably had three drops uh, Friday night. But he threw for 190 yards, three touchdowns, and yes. um, I, I'm not sure what what, it, what was he, what was the uh, numbers. 14 out of 20. 14 out of 20. Yeah. With three drops could have been 17 out of 20. Absolutely. Um, you know, so great, great night by him. He's really um, getting the grasp of you know being being now that we're. Ten games in, is that right? Ten games in? No, we're nine, nine games in. This is nine. Be, this will be the this will be game number ten. You know that we're far this far down the season, and him him being the first year with us, he's really, you know, you know he's got the keys to it. I mean, he understands everything we're doing now. And Tempo is there. Yes, everything's I mean, everything's there. perfect right you, now. You, you watch them in, in, the, in the highlight package earlier. He 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 gets the ball kind of. You can if you can see the bounce in his step. He knows where he's going with the ball. It's out of his hand quick. He's trusting his receivers, which is a big part of it as well. And um, they're, they're, you start to see that kind of tempo, that kind of pace. It, it, everything we do as far as tempo is concerned is obviously it's, it's brisk, let's just say. It's crisp what we do. And if he's doing that and getting that ball out of his hand, it just keeps that pace going because now you're getting big chunk yards. Yeah. You know, it's, you're down 20 yards downfield. You're running the line of scrimmage. 
they're 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 in that sort of they, they, whatever the team is. There's some sort of that that sort of retreat mode, and that just keeps that that momentum just keeps building. You score, you come back and do it again, and it gets harder and harder each time to to, to slow it down. So he's he's the catalyst to all that. But again, he's got guys that are doing some making some plays for him too. We talked about how Alvin Johnson and and um, and, and Gator Wilder six each six carries to, uh, during the in the game. Alvin will touch over 100. Gator in the in the mid 60s, early high seven, mid 70s, uh, as far as rushing was concerned. Two touchdowns. Those guys are making plays as well as the receivers are too. Yeah, and you know Keon's had you know put together some some big nights. I think he's had three or four um, big games back to back here. Uh, we saw Ryan Matulovich had nine nine catches for um, over 100 yards. Yeah, and you know I was thinking back like back to like 2008 or nine. That would have been a school record. Yeah, you know before we were introduced to a guy named Javon Hiley, who, which was who you know, took the school records yeah, and made it state made him, records. Yeah. 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 made a paper airplane right. out of him. Yeah, so you know. You know that's a that's a huge night. I mean, uh, you know, nine nine catches in one game, and you know, you know, again, you know, before before we knew of uh, of Javon, you know, I think the school record might have been um, forty catches on the year, yeah. and he's well past yeah. that. You know, yes. so it's it's a big big. Uh, you know, he's had a, he's had a big season, and he's just a sophomore, so. You know, that's maybe we'll maybe he'll be rivaling uh, Javon's number. Well, again, <laughs> he, say that, but, but the way he, be, he's he started um, as a sophomore, you know, that, that's yeah. where that's where Javon started. So there there could be some comparisons. We don't put that kind of pressure on the kid, but right. nonetheless, there, there there's the potential for that is there as well. Defensive side of the ball, we talked about special teams and offense, but third play from scrimmage, you get Damon Wilson scoop and score for a 20 yard touchdown. That. If anything, that, that that's the best way. You, maybe the best way you could start without even your offense on the field. You go up, you go up seven nothing. Well, you know, you do that, and it, it really, you know, you feel like a, a ton of bricks, and you know, and all any pre, any and all pressure kind of, you know, offensively kind of, you feel like everything's been lifted. Yeah. Um, you know, so we, we got to play like that anyway. But you know, when that does happen on the defensive side of the ball, before you even step out in the field offensively, and you're up seven nothing, that's, uh, you know, that's a huge way to relieve some uh, any. Any uh, any jitters or pregame jitters? Yeah, all or, that all that anxiety yeah. just gets washed right away. Yeah, so it's like it's like the it's like you know you you get there and you say to yourself, okay, we got to do something, and then they give you they spot you seven for you, and they're back on the field right. again, and you're like, okay, this is you know get us the ball, better, and then you get the ball back in the, on their 35, right. and it makes it even even more comfortable. So oh, the field position all night too. I mean, tr- tremendous. You know, the the uh, you know if we didn't have that type of field position, you know, who knows what the office numbers would have been? Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but we'll take short fields all all year. But, you know, we had we had great field position by the defense. The defense really, you know, put the clamps down all night long. I think they crossed the 50 uh, one time with the starters and had a double pass, um, which we uh, kind of bit up on. And, um, almost good. got back there. Yeah, was, almost yeah. got almost got back there. We covered. I think I think Jaquavius came over from the free safety yeah, spot did. and almost was able to make a play there. But no, I said. But again, uh, everybody. It, good, good stat lines for a lot of players. David Wilson had a really good stat line, sacks, and it, re- touchdowns, recoveries, um, that kind of stuff. Carter Dalton had a nice night. Uh, he intercepted a pass and sack and, and tackle for loss and, and that kind of thing. And so, and you know, I, I, you know, you, you've been out uh, missing Say Jutsi. You know, he's been he's out now. And I think the secondary played well ag- again. You know, they didn't they didn't test us too much. But I thought that they are all seeming to find their, their way and feel, seem comfortable in their position. I think, you know, Dalen Platt's really mm-hmm. starting to find yeah. his way and be comfortable back there. And that's, that's going to be huge for us moving forward. Is, you know, we can have, you know, you can count on Dalen on the outside and, um, you know, to, to cover somebody and, and run our defense. So that's going to be that's going to be huge moving forward. Yeah, and you talked about his athleticism and his ability to, to sort of be where you need him because he can play both sides of the ball now. He's... He could be, you know, that's right. that type of guy moving forward. So you love to see him be able to, to function on the defensive side just when you need him in those situations. Right. Another thing I was to say about special teams, uh, kind of an interesting stat line, Krokotov, 10, 10 kickoffs, nine touchbacks. You, that's, I, I say it all that's the time huge. during the games. It's huge. so huge in high school football because you, I mean, we got Elliott Washington returning kicks. All these teams have super athletes yeah. back there ready to make plays. And when, when, they, when, you, when they can't get out of the end zone, because they're not allowed to run out of the end zone, it's just it, they start at the 20, go have to go 80. It's tough. Yeah, if, he, tough. if he can be consistent on that moving forward in the playoffs, that will be a huge, huge weapon for us. Yeah, because like I said, look, you look at it. Not that 
you know, there's, there's other ways of means of doing things, but if, if that's the one way you can go, um, I go back to Zach Sessa and 17 right. run. I mean, that was just, they, they, we played some teams that were like, get it to the end zone, and it would, and you just, there was nothing, they, they, all those guys ready to go. It's just, you just, just, just take, you're just deflating them when it goes in the end zone. Every and the time. percentages are, the, the percentages are nuts as far as um, when a team scores starting at the 20. Um, Compared comparatively, if a team gets the ball at the 35 or 40, right? You know, the, right. the, the percentage of them finishing that drive with a touchdown or a punt are huge, and dramatic. Right. So, with the score being 87 to 20, give you an opportunity to address sort of the what was what, what happened during the game with the two-point conversion situation, just so you can explain your philosophy regarding that that situation in particular. I mean, it's simple. Uh, you know, we took the starters out at halftime. Um, they weren't going back in the game. We don't have a two extra point. You have no second string. We have no extra second point. string extra right. point field goal units. You know, so we go for two. We've been doing that for years. It's not something new. Um, not something to run the score up or right. belittle our opponent. And actually, our, my message in, in halftime is, you know, let's make sure we're respecting our opponent. And, right. Because um, you know, you can get to a situation where you're blowing a team out, and you know, your your players, you know. You know, could start, you know, talking trash and trying to make the other team feel bad. And you know, that was one thing that we addressed at halftime: is like we're not going to belittle these these guys. We're going to respect our opponents. Um, we're going to respect our our backup players. You know, the right. kids that are on scout team um, that are going to get a chance to get in the game. I mean, those kids deserve to play more than anybody. You know, they've been going you know all year long, and you know they only get to participate during practice, and finally they get a chance to get in the get in the game situation. You know, I'll be I'll be danged if I'm going to have them take a knee or not no, try to perform no, that's not. to their best level. That's that's not fair to them. That's not fair to for the, the work that they put in all year long. And uh, to be frank with you, like I, I don't have time to coach two teams. Right. Like, I'm in charge of my team, and I'm going to make sure that our our backup players, uh, whenever they're presented the, the opportunity to perform or play, that I'm going to try to put them in the best position to be successful. Um, no matter what the score is, but because they, you know, the only way that they're going to get better and the only way that they're going to, um, you know, grow as a player, uh, being a being a backup or a scout team player, is to put them in situations where we're competing and we're trying to score on offense. And and when we're on defense, it's not like, you know, no one ever says that. You know, right. no, no one ever shows the other side where, you know, all right, well we got our twos in and now you're throwing the ball deep and now we're we're, we're uh, you know running reverse passes and we're calling timeouts like. No one sees the other part of it. Right, right. You know, so we put the guys on defense that are backups. We don't go in there and tell them, we'll let them gain 10 yards, then tackle them. Yeah, no. no, we're it, trying to we're, we're trying to get stops. Right, because that kid could be the starter next week. Absolutely. And that, that's, that's as simple as it gets. So, and even with the situation the way it was, we did score 24 points in the second half. But go back to where we said earlier, two kickoff returns by Elliott Washington. Yeah, the bigger question is why do you keep kicking the ball deep? It's at some point in time, you're, you're, sort of, you're sort of lending yourself to that. Yeah. And, and what do you want Elliott to do? Do you want him to just kick a knee at the one-yard line? The ball didn't get in the end zone. He's, he's got to right. return it. And so if, you, if you're sort of doing yourself so – even, and, even and then you look at the stat line or look at the, the, the plays, I think we ran seven plays on offense, maybe eight in the whole, the whole two quarters of the second half. Oh, with very little. I was, so that it was wasn't, disappointing. It yeah. wasn't even like yeah. they think those kids got a lot to, to play. The defensive side of the ball, yes, and they did a great job, um, but it wasn't anything like that. So, I mean, just only thing because I know that there's some questions about it and, and whatever, maybe even from our own fan base, like not quite sure what the situation was, but that's as simple as it gets. Yeah, I mean, and bottom line is I, I, don't, have, I don't have the time or, or the need or want to coach another, another high school football team. I'm going to coach our team. I'm going to put our players in the best position. I'm going to give our, our players the best opportunity to grow as players and to, to – uh, Become better football players. Now, if they if they have a, you know, if we're playing a team that that um, can't stop us. Well, that's not my job. I can't help you stop right. us, and I right. can't help you score against us. I, all I can do is coach my team. And we we pulled the starters on defense out in the second quarter. Um, every offensive player was out at halftime. So you know that's 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 basically all I can tell you is, you know you you know you got you got I'm responsible for Brooks Bentley. Right. I'm I'm responsible for him. Sure. So, so if I pull Brooks Bentley in the first quarter and, you know, Brooks is trying to go to school to play football and, and he's like, well, coach, you know, I mean, why you, you know, you're pulling me in the first quarter and a, a team that I can really excel and really, and, you know, really have some, some big plays and really show my arm and, 
you know, it's great. I play four quarters against St. Francis and four quarters <laughs> against IMG where we right. can't do a really good job protecting and, and I'm getting my brains beat in, but then you're going to pull me when it's when it's my it's turn, my turn to, to, to get, shine? Yeah. I mean, come on. I'm in charge of him. Uh, you know, I'm not in charge of I'm not in charge of Riverdale secondary. Right. And so the thing about, you just said exactly what I was going to kind of lead into. The idea is that is that you have <laughs> these kids get they They've, they've been on the other side of this equation. Not 87 to 20 per se, but you have been where it's IMG and it's, it could be a running yeah, clock. We're so, outnumbered. So yeah, we've, we're yeah, outnumbered. We've known, we've been, so it's not like, it's not like we've, we're, we're the only, we're, we're doing this every week. We've played teams where they could do the same thing to us. So yeah. we, didn't, we didn't ask for, you know, nobody said, hey, you know, can you give me a little white flag over here and give me a chance to score? That, there's no way those guys are ever going to do that. No. Because in the, and then there's – Nor would I want that. And here the thing is, in their second string are five-star recruits just a year behind the, the guy who's a five-star recruit ahead of them. Well, when you only have 30 players, there's not a whole lot of second not, strings. That's it. <laughs> you know, so you've got 30 players that are all five-stars. There's not yeah. a whole lot of second strings. So, it's, so, again, it's like one of those things like people – it's like, hey, it's not – and not like we haven't been or haven't been in a situation like that in our in – our, in, our, in, our, in very – immediate past situations oh, yeah yeah you for know, sure and this yeah. season in particular you know but just the whole the whole idea of of you know we aren't supposed to perform and um you know let's lay down and that's that's nonsense and you no. know like i said i'm in i'm in charge of our our second string guys and our scout team guys i'm not in charge of, of what they decide to do but right. i can promise you when, whenever those young guys and those kids kids that are on scout team get in the game i'm going to do my job and I'm going to make sure that they have an opportunity to, to shine. I'm not going to shut it down and, right. and uh, you know, let's just take a knee or just, just hand the ball off and not run our offense. That's not fair to those kids. That's not fair to those no. kids. They have rules in place already um, for, for games where the score is out of hand and it's a running clock. And uh, I'd never ask to, before the clock not, not to run, but mm -hmm. we're going to run our offense. Right. Heck, you, you, we when we went to with Texas a couple of years ago, they don't have a running clock. No, those score those scores are regular in the state of Texas. You, you, these guys are they're like, we don't have a running clock. Right, you, you're going to play the whole game, and we're going to play it right to the very bitter end. Um, so there's no, there is none of that stuff. So yeah. and, and depending on where you're Pop, at, this isn't Pop Warner. I'm sorry. No, no, it's yeah. not. And and again, it's it's and you're 100 percent right about the fact that those that those kids who practice hard give you good looks from the scout team. Are, on, are are improving younger players. They do need to get their, their reps. And, and by the way, that's a playoff team we played. You know, they're, yeah. they're a playoff team. Legitimately, they 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 made the playoffs, and and so you got to figure that they're capable to, to, to be able to handle something like they that. They signed up for it. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. With that, we'll take our halftime break here. And before we do, I'd like to thank Bogies again for being our host for our podcast tonight. Uh, we always are t sort of tell ours on ourselves what we ate. I had a salad. You had a pasta dish tonight. Yeah, I want the I want the uh, what is it? Garlic pasta with shrimp. Okay. Pretty good. So it was little, had some. Uh, it was pretty healthy. It had a lot of spinach in there. I still got I some. I did see the spinach. Uh, yeah, spinach is hard to it. get rid of. You yeah. got to make sure you check yourself before you get on TV to, to do that. And then uh, standard standard issue for the production crew over here: burger and the veggie quesadilla route. So they don't they, even take their orders anymore. No, so you them, just, they just like, bring hey, it out. Yeah. There you go. Well, that's what they do with my drink. They bring my drink out, but they, they bring, these guys order the same food every, 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 every week. Well, it's got to get old. Going way back when we did a radio show out of Pops for maybe two or three years, my name was Shrimp Quesadilla. That's the, they didn't know my name is John Masoni. They just said, yeah. oh, Shrimp Quesadilla. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Know, whatever. So I was, I was sort of hooked into the for years of shrimp quesadilla, so that's you kind of become kind of become that guy after a little while. One other thing I wanted to tell you guys too, uh, on our screen right now, you're going to see the, it's the crawl on the bottom of the screen. But in, is is that inside inside the crawl? There is the the link or whatever it's the, the, the below the, the crawl the, below below the yeah the, on the screen somewhere is the uh, is the way to get on to watch the live stream on uh, Friday night. Uh, 7.30 kickoff, obviously, again, at Powell Davis Stadium. It will be the Lehigh Lightning, which we'll get into uh, after our break. But um, if you want to watch and not show up, we, we'd love to have you there. Beautiful football weather. It's going to be sweaters and little hoodies or whatever you like to wear, maybe long pants. And it's going to be a nice, cool night and uh, really, really uh, Hot get into chocolate. that. Let me use some hot chocolate out there. That. Listen, I, if you say hot chocolate and they go to they go to the brew burgers place and they don't got it, they'd be like, "Oh, you false saying, advertising." Yeah. Well, just ask them for some hot chocolate. I'm sure <laughs> Let's they see what they got. Yeah. So, with that, again, pay attention to that if you can, and we'll uh, we'll be we will be letting you know uh, about that link um, as the week goes on. So, with that, we'll take our break, 
uh, do about 90 seconds worth of uh, fun time with our advertisers and come back here with our sponsor spotlight when we get back. See you here in a few minutes. What does Douglas Jeep Chrysler Dodge Ram and Venice High football have in common? The perfect team and the perfect lineup. Douglas Jeep Chrysler Dodge Ram will always go the extra yard so you can score big with the area's best selection and savings. So if you're looking for a championship vehicle lineup and a dealership that tackles the competition, visit Douglas Jeep Chrysler Dodge Ram in Venice. And if you're looking for a championship football lineup, check out the Venice High football team. Who supports Venice High football? Douglas does! We're back here at Bogies for the second half of our Tuesday night podcast. And before we get started, sponsor spotlight for tonight, Lux Realty. You know Anthony, the owner of Lux Realty, an alumni of Venice High School. Alumni, yeah. He has the best, best commercials on the Jumbotron for sure. He does. Uh, he, he, de he definitely, at the end of the day, you kinda, you do, you, it does catch your eye. Uh, it's, it's, it's got a, a bit of humor to it, and it's, you know exactly what he, what he does. And buying and selling homes, and, and he's a... Very he's meticulous a, about his, what is his work. And, I agree. Um, and he did a fantastic job this week, um, as far as weekend, as far as being a, a big part of our golf tournament. Had a whole a par three set up where he had tents, giveaways, his own giveaways, the, the giving away what he had for, the, for that particular hole. I think hole. he has a really good uh, crew to... to to film his properties with, too. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not we, mistaken. We, kinda know, we think we know those yeah, guys. The yeah. vibrant aspect <laughs> team, you know, they're responsible for when, you know, Anthony gets a property, they go in and they do this beautiful job of filming the property and uh, trying to get it sold for them. Yeah, and again, and he's doing a fantastic job with us. Really appreciate his, as, as being one of our newer sponsors this year, he's taken a pretty, pretty, a pretty exten extensive role in regards to what he's doing, and I think he's really enjoying himself as well because I could see that he, he had a good time and he's, a, he's enjoying himself. And it's always good to see when the people who are investing in what we do at the, at the right. high school, that they get something not just from a business perspective, but they actually feel like they're part of the, of the team and the family. And, and I, love, I, I love the commercials. Yeah, they're good. They're good, yeah. no doubt about it. So, again, thanks to Anthony and Lux Realty for all they do for us. And, again, thanks. big shout-out to all the sponsors at the golf tournament. Um, they all did a fantastic job. All the volunteers are awesome. And so it's like one of those things where we can't say enough. I like to point out for a few of the bigger, more, you know, the, some of the sponsors did a lot for us this year. Uh, Douglas Jeep, uh, Berlin, Patton, Ebling, beverage sponsor. Lux Realty, again, for them for doing a lot. Affordable golf carts, carts uh, they had the volunteer carts, and Mozzarella Family and the McKenzie Corp. So those are just a few, all of our sponsors, all the whole sponsors, everybody, we really appreciate what you did. Um, did a really fantastic job for us and made it a very smooth and uh, you know, profitable, if you want to say, uh, golf tournament. It's always been a big fundraiser for us, and it really is a linchpin to what we do at Venice High School Football 
to get yeah. things rolling. I mean, if we can do it and the sponsors are having fun and the volunteers are having fun and the golfers are having fun, man, it makes it a lot easier for them to come on and do it again next year. Yeah, for sure. And it's a great, it's a great tournament. I mean, I've, I've actually golfed in it and enjoyed it uh, as a golfer before. Uh, unfortunately, we had to work this past Saturday, but it is a, it is a really good um, tournament. You know, you had Rick Michaels, who yes. was also one of our sponsors, Absolutely. come out and uh, you know provide breakfast, and you had you know, you, you just it's just a great it's just a great atmosphere and a great tournament. Had a great conversation with Rick. I was there a little earlier, and he just, I mean, he I mean it's it's fairly fun. I mean, we're enthusiastic. Obviously, you're the head coach, and I do what I do. And um, but to watch them, their enthusiasm for it. They're yeah. there super early in the morning and they're handing out sandwiches and they're laughing and talking to people and shaking hands. And it's just that, you, you know, they're getting more out of it than just just the just the notoriety of the business. Yeah. They're getting something out of it personally. And I think that's sort of why, you know, it, it, it does lend that success. And I think I think a lot of times um, even our, even the participants, the ones that have been there over and over again, um, they get that energy going for yeah. us as well. So we appreciate the folks that come out every year and do support us with their with their donation in regards to the golfing and, and the whole sponsor. So once again, thank you to all of you guys. Another big successful year for the golf tournament. Hurricane Ian tried to ruin it. Pushed us back, what, five weeks. All it did was give us better weather. This gave us that much better weather. Absolutely right. So we're, we're appreciative. And I've, oh, oh, one other thing. Golf in Venice, especially Waterford, uh, Charlie Derbyshire, Kim LeBlanc, all the people out there, what they do every year to host it. Can't forget about them as well. So yeah. appreciate that as well. All right, going back to football. So here we are, semifinals of the region, second round of the you know, playoff, you know, how you want to look at it. The Lehigh Lightning are coming into town. Um, obviously, they are a playoff early team. They have played a pretty decent schedule based on what we looked at earlier today and what you've seen before. And, of course, they have one very standout player, which we'll get to. But as far as Lehigh is concerned, um, Offense, defense. I know they got a lot of good players. What do you see? What do you see from them? I mean, they they have they have it all. I mean, they have a big defensive line, they have a big offensive line, and they have um, skilled players everywhere. Uh, their linebackers are the prototypical size linebackers that run sideline to sideline, very aggressive. Um, they're a fast, fast football team. Um, they 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 get to the football. I mean, they they when the ball is snapped, they are they are getting to that football. Um, and then offensively, they have a, a, a dual-threat type quarterback. Um, they have a number one running back in the country. Mm -hmm. They have yep. some receivers that can absolutely fly and catch the ball. Um, only one thing, one thing they don't have, they don't have a tight end. You know, so they're, they are, they don't, they're not going to line up with a tight end ever. They're going to be in spread. They're going to be in trips open. Um, so, so they don't have a tight end. Um, sometimes they'll line up with two backs in the backfield. But, um, you know, you have the number one back in the country, you know, that makes you a really good offense. And, and there's no debate about him being the one number one running back in the country. He is the, the, uh, the yeah, consensus no, he, yeah, guy. He yeah. is the guy. So it's not like it, this guy says it or that guy says it. Everybody says it. And, uh, again, he's, he, physically he's a prototype, what, 5'11", 6 foot maybe, maybe a little taller than that, uh, 215, you know, got the, got the speed, got the power, balance, all that stuff. And so um, we, we actually did get a chance to see him when he was a freshman we, yeah he was we, just, we he played was down starting, there starting running back as a freshman um but obviously a totally different person now mm -hmm. yeah than he was as a freshman but you know he 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 is a you know i got a chance to meet him last uh last year uh, around december um at the north south all-star game he was there on the sideline i got a chance to meet him um very impressive young man um you know very very humble it seems it seemed to me like he was very humble and you know, just from, from what I see from him on social media, uh, he is a very, very hard worker. And um, he's getting everything he's, he's worked, worked for. Yeah, to get to that, I wouldn't say, to get to the, the, if you call it the ES Pin 300 or any of those top level kind of recruitings, you've got to be a worker. Yeah. There's no, I mean, there's a lot of people that have a super, super duper talent, but you've well, I mean, you got to put I, the time I in mean, as there's well. also, I mean, you don't really have to. I mean, there's. You're going to have a Randy Moss. Not that Randy Moss didn't work hard, but right, I'm right, just right, saying, right. like, you're going to have some freak freak athletes. You might have a Randy Moss here or there. Or, Deion or, Sanders. Yeah, or Deion Sanders. And not, and not that those guys didn't work hard. I'm just saying that you are, you will run into some people that don't really necessarily have to work hard, and, you know, they're just really, really gifted and Doing blessed by stuff. the Lord. Um, but, you know, from what I see of Richard Young is he, he puts in the work, and 
um, was, a, was a very, very, you know, humble, and, um, nice young man when I met him. So, um, you know, hope, I, we hope nothing but the best for him, especially he's going to Alabama. That's my team. So <laughs> no, yeah. I hope he does You'll, really you'll well. be rooting for Richard yeah, next just, year. Yeah, just not, just not this Friday night. Um, and they're actually, you know, think about it. I mean, not to get off target, but. They've been the running back that got the kid from Georgia Tech. He's a special back. He's a, he's a yeah. kind of a Alvin Kamara looking guy, but it's not the way they he normally. He looks exactly like Alvin Kamara. Yeah. And so yeah. he's and so but he's got like Nick Saban usually has that guy who can give you 22, you know, carries yeah. and gets better as this, as the game goes on. The, the Mark Ingrams, the Trent Richardsons, yeah. the the Derrick Henrys. My gosh, that's the that's the guy right there. You look at it and say. He, once he gets cranked up, he's 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 been impossible to st stop since he's probably in the fifth grade. Yeah, he, he's been doing some stuff for over the years. So, yeah, he, he, I think he probably fits their fits their mo their mode for sure. With that, also just to kind of keep everybody abreast of what's going on, our region, there was from the we were, we were the only team that held serve. One yeah. beat eight, five six seven, all one in the bottom half of the bracket, which means that while we're playing Lehigh, Sarasota River, you get to play each other once again. Um, for their and their, and their yeah, half so of the, they, of the it semifinal. was actually everyone that we were thinking was going to advance. I mean, we thought we thought Palmetto, Manatee, you know, we thought those two were going to advance mm -hmm. and play each other. Or we thought we were going to actually be playing Palmetto, uh, and then uh, Manatee we Riverview. Manatee, Manatee would be playing Gulf Coast. Gulf Coast, okay. Um, but hey, I guess you know our our football here is a little better than the football down there, so. You got Riverview and Sarasota playing actually for the third time this year. They played in the spring game. They played in the regular season, and now they're playing again in the playoffs. So they played in every 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 season, you know, spring, regular season, now yeah. playoffs. Um, it's been uh, 12 years since uh, Sarasota's beat Riverview. Uh, I would I would think that it would take a monumental effort um, for them to 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 win the game and. Uh, you know, there's a lot to be said for tradition and things like that. But, you know, I will say this, you know, that, that's, that same Sarasota team, you know, I thought they had a uh, marquee win this year against Palmetto. Right. You know, we you talked about that, that earlier in the year. Yeah. So, you know, maybe, they, maybe they're maybe they able to pull it off Well, they again. beat Manatee, too. So, I mean, this Another marquee win. Yeah, so, that was, right. I mean, we were, we, and I was at Manatee. You know, that's always a tough place to play. Yeah. So and they went up there, and, and it was, I think they did it. They think they, they kind of handled them from what I could see from the yeah. high that reel. So. so, so you're right. I mean, they have had some marquee wins, but I think the biggest one is that hump of, of beating Riverview. Or, yeah. Or, you know, the, the rivalry game that. Uh, you know, Riverview has dominated for 12 years, or I think what they, I think the last time they won was 2010. And um, but it, it, it is kind of cool too that they get to play each other in the playoffs. Yeah. I mean, that's a that's a big deal there. You know, there'll be a huge crowd. Yeah, a huge crowd. They'll be they'll be packing that place. Yeah. So that'll be that'll be interesting to see how that goes. And and of course, if we hold if we hold our business, then it will be one of the, the winner of that game. Yeah, with well, us. we don't want to talk. We about don't want to talk it. about yeah. that. I we know. got one game. We got it one at a time. Absolutely. Um, but anyway, that we want to make sure we, we everybody knew that that's kind of how the region played out. Um, didn't see a lot of other things go kind of too haywire. Well, I think another in our class, you had uh, Niceville got upset. Okay. Uh, one one lost to seven. You know, Niceville okay. was a one seed. They lost to a seven seed or eight seed, maybe I think. Had to be an eight. Yeah. There were one. So they were one. They were a one seed. Lost to a, a eight seed. So that was that's a was a huge surprise uh, Friday night. You know, Niceville is, you know, one of those teams that um, are traditionally you know they they've won a state championship in the past. So they've had uh, they've had some big tradition. And there. I know that uh, Hurricane Nicole pushed a lot of the. East Coast schools back yeah, to, were, to, were, to Monday. Yeah, there were a lot of games played last night. Yeah, yeah, so I haven't looked at the region to see if anybody got upset nothing, there. Nothing in ours. I don't think anything in ours. It was Everything was kind of status quo in ours. Yeah, and I, did, I did, it was interesting to see how the brackets broke out, to see some of these marquee teams that are sort of having to play each other in and around the state. There will be some interesting games this week. That's the ones I'm talking about yeah. now because they all kind of came out and of there. And then there'll be some real interesting ones the following week. But there'll, there'll be there's some big games this week in our region where that can shake up some things that not necessarily happen um, right now, but kind of happen in the semifinals. Right, right, no doubt. And so it's it's exciting time of the year. Uh, you can keep up with the brackets on FH, FHSAA.com. Look, search for the brackets, uh, football brackets, and you get to see that. And you can kind of 
get a picture of what's, what's out there. Because, you know, if, you, if you're familiar with any of the, of the, of the names of these schools that we've played over the years, um, especially since you've been coaching, you know, the head coach, um, you see a lot of familiar names, and they're in different places playing different teams. But you see the matchups now are maybe something, something you wouldn't have seen um, right. all the time anymore because now, now they've condensed down some things. I, you know, I'm a little confused in particular how they even got who's in 4M and who's in 3M. Because some of the 3M schools, I'm like, they're not 3M or 4Ss or whatever. They would be. They the seem school like, size. But even with that, I, I think is, it, it, I, there's a line. Like, how, do you, how do we play a 7A schedule for all these years? And then there's another 7A school that's in a, that goes to the S, and we're in the four, 3S, and we're 4S. I, must, I mean, I, I think they've got to balance the region out somehow. Well, private schools get to throw any number out there they want. Oh, they can the, yeah. So they got 10? <laughs> yeah, because well, the, re, the way that the way that public schools do it is by your your, your account that you turn into the state uh, for your funding. You know, oh, you have okay. to you have to document. These are the, so you can just kind of say. So, but if you're private school, you got wow, well, we got we got what's what's three S or three <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, we got that's what we, we got. Are. Write that number down. Yeah, yeah. We got <laughs> right on the number. You so don't have, you sure don't have 17? I don't have 17. <laughs> so, okay, I you're just th- counted all of them by M. hand. You're three M. So yeah, so I can I, I yeah. Okay, so that makes sense then, because yeah. I'm like, some things I saw, that don't make any sense. That's kind of how they do it in the NFL, too, right? I mean, yeah. yeah, it's all the same. You get yeah. to pick. You know, what do what you want. Yeah, yeah. yeah I want to play AFC North. And same way in college. Yeah, I'm North, not yeah. East. Yeah. Yeah. Same way in yeah, college. That's, that's how it works, no doubt. Um, we talked about our doing our picks this this last week. And yes. Two right. and three two again and three. last week. And uh, it just seems like we're stuck on the schneid with this two and three situation. But, you know, there's been – there's been some good games. I mean, some of these marquee matchups have lived up to, the, to, their, to their billing. I thought Mississippi-Alabama was a great game this week in the college ranks. Um, while Texas, Texas and TCU was, a, I guess, a competitive game, I'm not sure it was a great game. Sort of had a little bit of a, uh, you know, kind of was a 3 nothing going in the fourth quarter and in the third quarter, so didn't really kind of right. send a chill up and down your spine uh, from that game. But, uh, again, the matchups have been good. Um, and so there, so there've been, so there've been some competitive games that have could tilted one way or the other as far as what, who you picked and what you thought was going to be the team that well, was going to walk away this with This week, it. this week, I would give them the second tier picks, and we're going to give them the first tier picks this okay. week. Okay. So last week we went Tennessee over Mizzou. Won, we won that one. Uh, we went Kentucky over Vandy. We that, did not so win that, that was, one. That was that was that's a surprise yeah. right there. Congratulations to Vanderbilt. We went Louisville over Clemson. Clemson did a nice job rebounding, and we did not get that one. We went Florida seven and a half over South Carolina. And they by yeah, far they look uh, good. Yes. That was a good game. And then we went Texas over TCU, and uh, TCU showed that they they might be for real. Yeah, and I mean in a, in, a, in a conference where you're, they're running up some big scores, yeah, they played some defense in that game. So yeah, big big shout out to those guys. And that's a, and, and I didn't realize that, that Sonny Dykes that was that's his first year at TCU. He's yeah. ten and zero at the start. That's a heck of a start yeah. in that conference with that team. That's so great. So you tell me. I got my picks. You tell me if you're going with me or against okay. me, and I'll, I'll put a Go note ahead. here. So I'm going Florida minus fourteen over Vanderbilt. Yes, I, I agree. I'm going Ohio State minus twenty seven and a half over Maryland. Uh, yes, because they've they've they need they need to get their engine cranked up before Michigan. So I agree. I'm going I'm going Tennessee minus twenty one and a half over South Carolina. Yes, because South Carolina looked like a team that did not have an offense. And Tennessee has to has to get in. Yes, that. yes. they they, yeah. they this that now now it's style points for Tennessee. Yep. And I got LSU minus fourteen and a half over UAB. Yeah, yeah. And I got Utah plus three over Oregon. Getting three yeah. over Oregon. Yeah, I'll say that because I think um, not that Oregon is going to lay down, but I think that was such a deflating deflating loss to Washington yeah. at home. That's tough. That's yeah. a, that, that's really tough to come over get over that one because. I know they got. They probably have some goals still ahead of them, but I would. And that Washington guy, that was the quarterback that played against us, Tampa Tech. Michael Penix, yeah. Yeah. And he, and you know, we saw that that one of those special athletes you get to see. Yeah. Uh, He ran a long touchdown against us in that game against Tampa Tech. I think he broke one like 89 yards or something early in the game from us. And so he he's athletic. Um, Always those lefties always look a little awkward when they're throwing it, but he does put a put a nice ball out there. He threw threw some great throws and. uh, when he was in Indiana, I mean, he did some stuff that was pretty special as well. He led some upsets, and then now he's at Washington because of the portal. And, um, you know, good for him. He's, he's putting, he's putting right. it, put together a nice career in college. 
and a good, good opportunity. But you do know when, you, we, when we watch those games, we're not just watching our players. We're watching the guys that we played yeah. against. Yeah, there's a lot of those. A lot of those. You see them out there. I'm always like, hey, we played against that guy or played against this guy. Right. So that will be something I will, I'm sure we see a lot more in the future. So, yeah, we're down with those picks. I think we're going to be um, – I think we're going to be all right this week. I, I like those picks. I, I did too. I didn't hesitate on any of them. Right. I liked every one of those picks, and I think that I think and I think also this week, this is usually the week before the rivalry games. So, back in the day, you played a directional school, meaning you played somebody that you that you paid to come to play. Right. You got you got the easy victory, and then you went to get ready for your rival. Not so much anymore with the expansion of the conferences. You got to get all those games in now. Right. So not always the case. Um, so that that lends itself to competitive games, but not necessarily the games that you really that, that these teams that have some a lot on the line should be concerned with. I think the only game I would feel any bit of mm, uneasiness would be the last one, the Utah Oregon game. Yeah, you know, speaking of uh, next week, uh, good chance that we don't have the coaches show are pretty much almost 100 percent. Oh, we we are going to have it. We're good. Okay, we are going to have the coach show. All right. He must have got the text think, message I didn't, Yeah, I didn't think that we, they were going to be able to post it. Well, you can it's watch it at working. Thanksgiving. Yeah, all right. So we right? will we, we'll, we'll, we'll we'll do to the watch coach's it. show, or we'll definitely do the, the podcast on Tuesday night. Heck, yeah. No doubt. So that'll be fun. <laughs> Sit down after turkey, wait for the wait 8 o'clock game to start, and watch John and John do the, do yeah. the John Pika coach's show. That'd be kind of cool. And plus, we come in here, we can have some chicken wings or something before we eat turkey for the next six days. Yeah, just kind of prime your belly up, you know, <laughs> Just for how fat you're going to get. I probably should eat a salad, but I know I probably well, That's won't. what we do. You know what we do at our house is on um, on Wednesday night as we go to uh, what's the what's the place uh, in Sarasota the all you can eat buffet. It's uh, they're they're Amish. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Um, it's I know what you're talking about. It's it's like something kitchen or something like that. A name. Well like anyway, it. we go there the night before Thanksgiving just to get see how fat we can get. We, you know try to. Expand our belly, Get the belts loose, expand loose, our yeah. belly a little bit, so on Thursday we can we can really be pigs. Yeah, yeah no, so. like really go for it. Yeah, really go for it. Because so if you don't expand your belly, if you don't if you don't pre if you don't train yourself, you just can't go into game time expecting to to be a pig on game day. My family has a tendency to get too quick into they get they get dessert crazy before the desserts on Thanksgiving. Like so, I go had, dessert first. Oh, they 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 they, they just like oh. Try this cherry pie. Do you feel like it? Because I, th- I think they talk about it and get themselves in a frenzy for the pies and oh, before, all the sweet before stuff. That, yeah. Well, our family, we, we do um, appetizers, like really, really good appetizers. So you're absolutely stuffed be- you know, before the dinner comes out. Like, so by the time the turkey's there, you're like, you're like you, f- you feel horrible already. Yeah, it's and you're like, well, I'm just going to eat this turkey because I'm, I already feel horrible. Maybe this will make me sleep. My thing is that it's almost like the, the Chinese food effect. Thanksgiving dinner. I don't know if it's because it's it takes it because it's filling with the starches and everything, but by about 7:30, I'm ready to strap it on again. I'm ready to go full turkey with the, the oh. whatever it may be, and that's that's usually the, that's the killer because the next day, I'm pretty miserable. The next day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it, and, and I don't shop. I use a golf if I can, to, but I got to work it off because that's a rough, that's a rough stretch. There well, hopefully, you hopefully, uh, you know, if all goes as planned, I'll be we'll be coaching. Or, you know. You know well, if that's I, the case, I won't be able to wear a belt that night. Put it that way. <laughs> have to wear the, the the shirt out of the pants over over yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I look gotcha. totally different. Maybe maybe a hoodie. Maybe a hoodie. And if you said, then when you're on the, do, do, doing the live stream, you can always say it's the camera that adds the pounds. What's the ten pounds? Well, per, the live stream per, gonna be, is going to be cam? two. Oh, for you. Yeah. Oh yeah, there you go. So I'll just be like, then say, look, man, I'm bloated. A lot of salt. Got I got issues. That's I'm, sure they have a, I'm sure they could have a lens like. Um, like they do in all these they can social do, media. They can do the thing where they have thinner. where it's blurry behind me, can it make me look like I'm in 3D? Right. I can do that. I mean, that 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 would be the the one I could probably that would yeah. be the best the best view of me. Blur me blur me up and put me out front, and I, I'll I'll be I'll be fine with it for my 10 seconds before the at the beginning of the show before we started talking about our pregame stuff. Actually, the pregame I don't know if you know this or not, but what we're doing right now is a lot of what our pregame show is now. Oh, so, it's you, so you and I, so it's technically we're kind of doing it, but we're doing it now. So this might make the pregame show. Us being fat on Thanksgiving might oh, make the pregame show. Okay. I mean, matter of fact, now that I've said it, there probably will be a segment now that are put on there about something about what we weigh or something along those lines and sort of okay. a, kind of see. We'll, so see if, he, see if he takes the bait when he watches our when he watches the podcast. Okay. Talking about Josh Grant, my partner on the on the live stream. So 
Anyway, um, anything else you'd like to add for tonight, or are we uh, good to go? Just got to make everybody sure. I know everybody will be out there for the game on Friday night. That's what we want. Yeah, just come support these kids, and, you know, big game for us. And, you know, you get a chance to see uh, number one running back in the country at yeah. Venice High School. Um, and, you know, a guy that you'll probably see playing, suiting up for Alabama next year. And get there early if you can, obviously, because it could, it could be a bigger crowd like these playoff games are. And they got to get there early. You get to see the entry for the Indians. You don't want to miss that. That's always a big deal. And uh, the band's been doing a great job this year. Um, yeah. David Wing, the, the director of, of the band, doing a fantastic job. And uh, so they're really, you know, it, it's, it's been a nice, smooth, you know, they, they get out there and they get everybody sort of hyped up pregame. Yeah. So get out there and, and, and give them some support. And uh, what they do is, you know, again, it's, it's tradition. You know, it's, I always said it's cool, but high school football, especially Venice High School, it's an, in the early part of the year, the sun's setting. Now it's a little darker out. Everything's kind of cool. National anthem, the yeah. alma mater. So always a fun time. It's sort of the traditional part of everything. So get there early if you can and uh, enjoy everything. And go to, go to those concessions stand if you're hungry. There's your there's your break in it from the turkey. Go and get a burger. For hot, ask for hot chocolate. Uh, see if they got hot chocolates. If they so do, Coach Peacock they, said you should have hot chocolate. <laughs> if they don't have it, just say you should have it by now. I mean, <laughs> this is tight. If you're if any time any time of year, you can have hot chocolates now. It's football season yeah. right now, absolutely. With that, Coach, again, thanks for being here, and uh, we'll see you next week. Obviously, we're going to do a show, so we're ready, ready to go next week yep. pre Thanksgiving. And thank you guys for joining us. Uh, thank you to Bogies as well. We appreciate all their help, and again, all to those sole sponsors and our sponsor spotlight, Lux Realty, and all they do for us as well. With that, we'll see you here next week on our Tuesday night podcast. Have a good week.